Hello, lovely internet strangers. Let's talk about dads, shall we? Father's Day is almost upon us, and I'm sure many of you are wondering, what should I get my father for Father's Day? I should get him a book, and where should I look for guidance for that book I'm going to buy him? Clearly an SJW book blog. And look no further, because I have found the list for you. I have dug it up from the murky depths of my saved articles. It is an article from three years ago, but I am sure it is just as relevant today. This list is titled, 14 books to give my dad for Father's Day. And I know you are dying to know what the recommendations are. What book should you give your dad for Father's Day? I'm sure you're gonna find a gem on this list, let me tell you. I thought I would talk about this list in particular because I kind of wanted to shit on a list of books, but I didn't want it to just be shitting on a list of books with no point to it. I wanted to show an example of this kind of attitude from feminists, especially in the intersectional side, where they feel the need to educate other people. And I didn't want to just shit on books, I also wanted to be constructive, so after I finish shitting on this list, I'm going to provide my own recommendations of books that you should actually get your father for Father's Day if your father likes reading fiction. It's June, which in book world is officially dads and grads season. Most bookstores and publishers have a pretty narrow idea of what constitutes appropriate gifts for dads for Father's Day when the endless customers ask them, what are the best books to give my dad? Mysteries thrillers, sci-fi, even specific kinds of literary fiction all populate Father's Day tables in bookstores everywhere. But these books are easy suggestions that don't take much thought. Yes, I'm sure a dad will like them, but will yours? You wouldn't give your best friend a book just because it was labeled books for best friends, would you? Don't give just any books for Father's Day. No, no, we wouldn't want to give them books they would like, like sci-fi and thrillers. No, we can do much better than that. For my dad this year, I wanted to find books that would do more. My dad and I don't share many of the same political or social opinions, and our current climate has tested our relationship in a lot of ways, but it's also opened the lines of communication too. We've talked about issues that we never had reason to discuss before, and I'll give my dad this, he's always been open to books I've recommended to him. So I put together a list of books that I think that not only my dad should read, but that you might want to include in your book and tie gift this year. Basically she's saying, I'm gonna take the fact that my father is open to my suggestions and take the goodwill that we've cultivated between us and use this as an opportunity on his day to educate him with what I think. Ah, the first selection is perfect. It's a double whammy. Two books by Chimamandi Ngozi Adichie. I do not know if I pronounced her name correctly, but she became big when she published We Should All Be Feminists listed here, and then the follow-up, which was A Feminist Manifesto and 15 Suggestions. If you think I know how to pronounce that name, you are kidding yourself. Can you imagine giving your dad two feminist books and being like, hey dad, I thought of you on Father's Day. I thought that on Father's Day you would like to know why we should all be feminists and so I found a book that would explain it to you. Like where is your head? I say this as someone who used to be a hardcore intersectional feminist and even when I was a hardcore intersectional feminist would I have given my father these books for Father's Day? No. I might have suggested he read them, I might have mailed him a copy on some random day, but would I have been like this is how I'm going to celebrate this occasion with you? Hell no. So apparently I was not ideologically possessed enough to get to this level. Let's see why she recommends them. I paired these together because this is how I read them, one after the other, and it's now how I recommend everyone come to Adichie's ideas. We Should All Be Feminists is a fantastic theoretical discussion on why feminism is not just a women's position, but why all humans should be feminists. That means you, dad. That means you. And then following that with dear, however you pronounce that, Adichie's Concrete Guide to Raising or Becoming a Feminist gives a little more instruction for dads who want to be feminists or who want to raise feminists but don't quite know how. Neither me or my dad would refer to him as a feminist because he can't be one, he can only be a male ally. But I do want him to not only know why I am one but why I think he should be one too. On Immunity by Eula Biss. While Biss's treatise about being a mother in a time of an anti-vax mentality speaks very clearly to mothers on Father's Day, there's nothing that keeps it from being relevant and important for fathers to read too. Even as I explicitly acknowledge but this has nothing to do with being a father. Does it matter? I'm gonna make it about being a father because that's how much of a narcissist I am. This isn't as much of a should I vaccinate or shouldn't I? Yes, obviously you should vaccinate your children argument. It's a broader examination of parental fear and the societal norms that led us to this anti-vax place. Even if your dad, like mine, is 100% on board with vaccines, this book is a fantastic examination of how society creates and encourages parents to fear absolutely everything that all parents would benefit from reading. I can see giving your father 
father a nonfiction book for Father's Day, but you know, maybe something on history or science, not like, here dad, Here's a lecture on how to be a parent. All right, The Mothers by Britt Bennett. Okay, we've come to the fiction section. On its face, Bennett's novel is about abortion. Yes, this is exactly what fathers want to think about on Father's Day. And both parties' reactions in the aftermath of that decision. Not in an, the father should have a say in whether a woman gets an abortion way, but in a nuanced, let's not pretend that fathers have no emotional stake way that allows for humanness and confusion and empathy. Ah, yes, don't hide what your opinion is on whether the father should have a say in what happens to his unborn child. No, just come right out with that. The concentric rings of that moment for all involved parties make for a powerful novel that could generate some interesting conversations. Hi dad, happy Father's Day. I got you a novel about abortion. Let me know when you're done reading it so we can talk about it. Okay, bye. Jesus, how much do you hate your dad to give him this book on Father's Day? Are you kidding me with this shit? The lovely bones? Yeah, let's give dad a book about a teenage girl getting murdered. That's what he wants to read on Father's Day. An oldie but a goodie. This this is a bit of a cheat because my dad read this book when it came out and cried the whole way through it, but I do think every dad should read this book. It's not an easy book by any means, trigger warnings up the wazoo, but at its core, Siebel's a novel about a 14 year old who is murdered and is watching her family try to cope with it and search for her killer from heaven is about the connection between parents, particularly dads and daughters. Hi dad, happy father's day. I got you this book about a teenage girl being murdered. Especially can you imagine if you were a teenage girl and gave this to your dad like, hi dad, I I thought you should take Father's Day as a moment to think about the fact that I could get murdered and you might have to deal with that. I'm sure you've never thought about this before. In case you haven't, here's a book to read about it. Bye. Love you. H is for Hawk by Helen McDonald. Guys, I swear I didn't intend to make everyone cry with this list. Bitch, don't lie to us, okay? But here we are. McDonald's memoir is about birds. No, the title isn't a metaphor. It's actually about hawks. But it's also about her recovery and grief in the wake of her father's unexpected death. And while it will probably make you and your dad cry, it's also just a really beautiful portrait of a daughter coming to terms with this loss. So you're gonna give your father a book on Father's Day about a dad dying. And on top of that, this is not a book that is about the father's experience. It's about you. It's about you as the daughter. It is not about your father. Like how do you get to be such a fucking narcissist that you would give this book to your father on Father's Day? The Book of Unknown Americans by Christina Enriquez. Ugh, just this book guys. I'm sorry again, but you're going to need tissue. This novel has a lot going on. Immigration, brain injury, young love, marriage, but it's also about parenting and guilt and what you give up for your children. While the mother at the center of the story is probably what a lot of people initially focus on, it is the father that resonated most with me and he is the character I most feel for. Even though what most people are gonna get out of this novel is the mother, what I picked up on for the purposes of shoehorning this into my list is the father. So that's why it goes on this list and that's why you should give it to your father. No other explanation necessary Let's make him cry and think about the sacrifices involved in being a parent because he hasn't had to live that shit. You should just take a book and beat him over the head with it until he really gets it. The Inexplicable Logic of My Life by Benjamin Alire Saenz. I'm not Mexican-American or gay or adopted, but this fantastic story by the author of Aristotle and Dante, Discover the Secrets of the Universe, is just really fantastic for building a relationship between a teenage boy and his gay adoptive father. Let's be real, I'm just trying to make my dad cry now. Well, at least you admit it, bitch. But even if you were a teenage boy with a gay adopted father, would you want to give him a book about it on Father's Day? You can give your father a sentimental gift. You can write him a lovely card. You can buy him a book that was something he like read to you in childhood, something that is personal to your relationship with your father. Why is Father's Day seen by this person and people like them as an opportunity to like lecture your father, you know? The Handmaid's Tale, of course. The most timely of timely reads, I'm not going to explain what it's about because you know what it's about because fucking feminists have been thrown in your face since they made the goddamn TV show. So y'all know what it's about. It's about feminist bullshit. <laughs> but I include it on this list, not because they want to make a political statement. I don't think you're gonna pass a lie detector on that or get into a fight with my dad, but because I want him to genuinely understand the 
fear of losing reproductive rights and empathize with the very real consequences of our patriarchal system. See also Bitch Planet. I have no problem with you if you really want to have this dialogue with your dad and you want to give him the handmaid's tale and be like, dad, I want you to genuinely understand the fear of losing reproductive rights. Fine. Why is Father's Day the venue for that choice? How are you that narcissistic? And really, like if you're going to give your dad comics, Bitch Planet is not even, not even in the top 20 recommendations I would have for comic gifts for your father on Father's Day. Ooh, getting even better. Missoula, Rape and the Justice System in a College Town by John Krakauer. Moving beyond the novels about fatherhood that will make you cry portion of our program, Missoula is not by any means an easier book for dads, but I include it because like many men, my dad was skeptical that catcalling slash fear of being raped or killed slash violence by men was a thing I faced on a daily basis until he saw that video of a woman walking the streets of NYC. Do not even get me started on that fucking bullshit video, okay? I think the Crack Hours examination of how rape culture is so ingrained into college life is a crucial one for fathers to see. I include it because I want to be able to point to something and say, see, this is how it is, and this is how I feel. Hopefully we'll get to a point where I don't need empirical evidence written by a white man for my reality to be believed, but this is one step on the road to getting to that place. Oh my God, like where do we even start? Dad, let's take Father's Day as an occasion to talk about rape culture, and let's talk about how I have fear for my life, and I I want you to understand how I feel. This isn't about you and how you feel on Father's Day. This is about me, you understanding me. Got it? God, like just give your dad a bottle of whiskey to drink and be done with it for fuck's sake. Oh, we're not done with the reproductive rights portion of the list. Life's Work, A Moral Argument for Choice by Dr. Willie Parker. In a similar vein, I have a hard time making arguments to my dad and most men about why reproductive choice matters and how being pro-choice doesn't mean that I'm dead inside. Being pro-choice does not mean you're dead inside, but beating your dad over the head with your beliefs on Father's Day kind of does. He hasn't said those words to me, but it also took a lot of work and tears on my part to get him to admit that he'd be okay with me getting an abortion if I were raped or mine or the baby's health were at risk, etc. So it's not far off the mark. Parker has worked as a reproductive advocate and abortion provider for decades and uses this experience combined with scientific evidence to explain why providing help to women in need is fundamentally the Christian thing to do. I get that you're having some argument with your dad about abortion and reproductive rights, and this has been an ongoing conversation for you too, but is Father's Day really the opportunity? Her personal life and her personal relationship with her father is whatever but she's writing a list that is presumably for other people. I assume that she thinks that there are other women that have this difficulty with their father and she's probably right. I can think of one friend off the top of my head that probably has had this argument with her father, but I would not recommend to her to give him this book on Father's Day as a way to turn the tide of that conversation. Smarter Than You Think, How Technology Is Changing Our Minds for the Better by Clive Thompson. Ooh, finally something that is less political, I think. My dad's version of social media is LinkedIn and God love him for wanting nothing to do with Facebook. He has an Instagram, which he uses solely to look at pictures of my dogs on their dedicated account. Wow, you have an Instagram account for your dogs. Why am I not surprised by that at all? Thankfully, he's rarely critical of the time I spend online, but every once in a while, I have to hard eye roll when he makes a comment about how the only thing getting smarter from my smartphone is the tech companies. Clive Thompson's examination of the ways in which technology is actually making us better and smarter and faster is a good read for dads in general, tech averse or not. It's fine. You and your dad think differently. But when you read what she's written here, the resentment and the bitterness here is so clear where she's not giving this to her dad from an open heart. She makes reference to having to hard eye roll. She thinks she's smarter than him. She thinks she knows better and she's going to give him a book to back up her beliefs on his day, the day to celebrate him and his role in bringing her into the world and raising her. Happy Father's Day. You're wrong. Modern Romance by Aziz Ansari. Probably the last book you think to recommend to your dad, I know, but that's not going to stop me. But if more than 10 years of dating in the hellscapes that are NYC and DC have taught me anything, it's that my dad will never understand why I'm still single unless I put concrete quantitative facts in front of his face. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I almost just died laughing there. Ooh, yes. The reason that you're still single is because you live in New York City. Because no women that live in New York City and date there ever find anyone. Dating sucks, not least because of the internet, but it certainly isn't helped by that. So if I can hold off the maybe you're just too picky comments with a heavy dose of humor and anecdotes about Tinder that aren't my own, I'm doing it. This dovetails nicely with my last video about the problem with feminists and dating in the modern era is that they have no sense of personal responsibility or self-awareness. 
Yeah, bitch, you are too picky. And just reading this list, you sound like a total narcissist who thinks that she's better than everyone else. She's clearly resentful. Happy Father's Day. I know we've been arguing about why I'm still single and I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to give you a book so that you would understand why I'm still single. The book is not called, as I love quoting from How I Met Your Mother, of course you're still single, take a look at yourself, you dumb slut. This book is a quantitative analysis of the cultural and societal factors that I have no ability to do anything about, no ability to navigate successfully. Nothing is my fault. I'm still single because New York City and DC suck. All right, guys, we've come to the end of the list. All right, let's take a deep breath. Double Bind, Women on Ambition, edited by Robin Rom. My dad, like many other dads, works with women in his day job. Yes, because most workplaces are co-ed. So yeah, he probably works with women. Those alien creatures, women. And while I am pretty confident that he's not a gross sexist dude at work, not 100%, pretty confident he's not a gross sexist dude at work, it's next to impossible as a man for him to understand the myriad ways in which being a woman in the workplace in particular is different from being a man at work. With this collection, Rom taps many different voices about this experience, both specifically and in general, in a way that I hope will illuminate the ways in which men can be professional allies and not just expect the women in their offices to do for themselves, as well as explain a bit of why I complain about the things I do after a long day at work. I want you to understand, Dad, why I complain about shit. I don't want you to offer any solutions. I'm just gonna, again, take a book and just beat you over the head with legitimate reasons, aka my lazy justifications for why my life sucks. Anyone talking about how feminism, people don't understand it, people hate it, you know, they're against it. Well, then how come all these feminist books keep getting published? Because I swear to God, there's a million of them. So you can find a book to support any fucking bullshit feminist idea that you want. Patriarchy, rape culture, the wage gap, fucking anything. Emotional labor, this shit. Like I tried reading this collection actually. I tried reading like the first essay and I already was like, okay, maybe I'll make a video on this someday, but I'm gonna have to maybe like drink through reading this book. All right guys, we come to the end of the list. She asks, what would you add? And I have a few suggestions. I have a bunch that are young adult novels, which is kind of a jab at this website because they're always talking about how men don't understand female characters. When my dad was going through a reading slump, I gave him a bunch of young adult books to read. He really got into them, like really emotionally invested. And most of them, the main characters were female characters. So take that social justice feminist weirdos. And then I have a couple of adult fiction recommendations and a couple of comic recommendations. My dad loved The Hunger Games. Uh, I don't think I need to explain that one too much. If you haven't heard of The Hunger Games, you've been living under a rock somewhere. My dad also really liked Divergent. I think that one is not as good as The Hunger Games, but it's still like high concept, dystopian. There's a lot of ethical considerations. There's a lot of action. So those are two dystopian YA picks. On the fantasy side, two that he liked were Cinder by Marissa Meyer, which is the first in the Lunar Chronicle series. And he read the entire thing. It's a series of fairy tale retellings that are all kind of linked together. And there's moon people. There's a lot of action. If your father likes fantasy and fairy tales. There's a little bit of a sci-fi element because there is space travel. He also liked A Girl of Fire and Thorns, a kind of standard high fantasy with a girl who is sent to be married off to a king. Then he's assassinated and she is suddenly forced to take over. It doesn't pull its punches just because it's young adult. There's real death and danger and intrigue. So I think this is a, a good selection. The Fifth Way by Rick Yancey. Oh my god, did my dad get into this series. It's a series about alien invasion. Let me just say that this book series like destroyed both of us emotionally. My dad would say that it's pretty brutal. I would say if your dad likes The Twilight Zone, if he likes sci-fi that is kind of grounded, and then Across the Universe by Beth Revis, which is about an intergenerational spaceship and a girl who was woken up from cryosleep too early and the boy who woke her up and like mystery about what's going on with the ship and where they're going, what's gone on in all the years since they were put into cryosleep and this whole society of people that's living there. Again, if your dad is into kind of like sci-fi with a lot of like ethical considerations, like neither The Fifth Wave nor Across the Universe are hard sci-fi, but they're still really compelling stories about what it means to be human. And then a couple that are just more like fun, Croak by Gina D'Amico, which is about a girl who gets sent to live with her uncle. She's kind of a troublemaker. And then she discovers that 
she like has the power to be a grim reaper. Yo, that book series gets really real and my dad was referring to Gina D'Amico as like the George R. R. Martin of YA because of the brutality with which she dispatches characters. The most random one is Heist Society by Ellie Carter, which is about a girl who comes from like a family of art thieves. She's trying to go straight, but then a friend of hers hauls her in for, you know, one last heist. The high concept description would be Ocean's Eleven with teenagers. So I have two adult fiction recommendations. One is sci-fi, one is fantasy. You've heard of both of them, but they both live up to the hype in my opinion, and they are both road tested by my father. One is The Martian by Andy Weir, which he picked up at Comic-Con. He loved it. I read it. I loved it. I think it's way better than the movie, which I've also seen. The pacing is really good. And is the ending kind of ridiculous? Sure. But I think it's a solid recommendation for dad. The fantasy pick is Good Omens, which is a book that I read back in college and loved. My dad read it years ago and loved. I started rereading it not too long ago, and it's still just as good as I remember. If your dad likes fantasy, if he likes Neil Gaiman or Terry Pratchett and hasn't read Good Omens, if he likes that kind of dry humor, if he likes stuff that has to do with the apocalypse and angels and demons, this book has everything. This book is amazing. Definitely a solid pick for dad if he has not read it. And I have two comic recommendations. One is Fables. This is also based on fairy tales, but it is an incredibly, incredibly brutal comic series. I cannot stress that enough. There are so many different storylines that are woven in. There's so much to dig into. I think Fables is a good mix of funny and lighthearted things and then the dark brutality. It's got good storytelling. Highly recommend. And then the other would be Alias, which most of you will know as Jessica Jones. The series was like revived under the name Jessica Jones with new comics, but the original series is called Alias after her detective agency, Alias Investigations. And I tried to watch the show. I got like halfway through, but honestly, it's not as good as the comics, which I read before the show came out. In the comics, Jessica Jones is a PI who used to be a superhero, but she's given up that life. She basically takes on Kate cases that are like two small potatoes for the Avengers. The comic series is very much not about the purple man in the way that it is in the TV show. And it's not this whole like commentary on rape culture and sexual assault and etc. No. The reason I like Alias is because it's not a feminist commentary on anything. Her trauma unfolds very slowly over the course of the books. It's much more about Jessica and the cases. If your dad has not read the Alias comics, but likes detectives, stories, liked Veronica Mars. I will put the list of books I recommended in the description in case you would like to actually purchase any of them for your dad for Father's Day or any other day or just for yourself. If you have any questions about any of them, if you want other book recommendations, let me know. I urge you all to get your father a really amazing Father's Day gift, whether it is one of the books I recommended or not, whether it is just a big hug or a nice card, but please, please, I don't think I have to tell you, do not get him any of the books on the list that I reviewed unless you hate your father and yourself. I thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe and I hope to have more content for you very soon.